Hi, I am Dr. Kim Sage. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to this little mini series this week on hypervigilance within a larger series called Wildly Loved. My goal is to just help you understand that you are truly worthy of being wildly loved, of loving with wild abandonment, and not living in that very limited, fearful, untrustworthy trauma brain. The trauma brain that says that no one is safe and nothing is good and it's always bad and bad things are gonna happen. My goal with this entire series that I'm trying to post Monday through Friday every week right now is to really help you understand yourself and your life and your story more. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and clicking that little box in the bell, and that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. And please check out my online courses and other links I have down below for other resources and checklists and videos, and um, just hopefully whatever I can create that can help you understand yourself better, as I said. So let's get into today's video, which is about understanding what I call low-key and chronic hypervigilance. If you're just tuning in today, you might want to check out yesterday's video, just kind of generally explaining the kind of two veins of how we can see hypervigilance in a very typical sort of PTSD heightened, very fight or flight type PTSD response and, and hypervigilance about the world, always scanning for danger, and how what we're talking about this week, which is actually the more low-key chronic type state where you are not really feeling that you're safe in the world but not in the any moment you know i'm going to be uh, it's going to be bad it's just that you've taken that template of childhood with a more complex or complicated unpredictable type caregivers eggshell type parents or unavailable parents or unstable and now you've applied that template to the world and so everything is kind of the volume is turned up but in many ways, as you'll see in the questionnaire, it always comes back to something about you. So let's get into the 10 statements I have here that will help you understand whether or not this applies to you. So it's not necessarily like a full blown, it's not a diagnostic tool, but just the more things you say yes to, you might wanna do some more research and see if that this, yeah, you know, this does really apply to me and this is really affecting my life and relationships in some way, okay? So I will probably post at the end of this video or somewhere a link to these questions or I'll post them in the comment or the chat section or I should say down below the video, but I hope that you will find them helpful as you look at your life, all right? So number one is, I find myself wanting to avoid social interactions. And even when I say yes, I tend to not really want to go, even until the last minute. When I do go, I tend to have a decent time, but when I get home, I am completely drained and exhausted. Number two, I tend to always think everything is my fault, even if I don't show it outwardly. My first thought when something happens or there's a, a comment about something or something is said or done is that, what did I do wrong? My go-to is never, maybe this isn't about me, maybe it's about them. It's always about me. Number three, I overread and overfocus on others' tone of voice, facial expressions, and their nonverbal communication. So I'm always overreading and overanalyzing and then interpreting what I think other people are thinking or doing or saying. Number four, I am often low key annoyed and irritated with people, and I don't necessarily tell them about it, but I feel it. Sometimes I hold a grudge about that longer than I care to admit. Number five, I tend to have strong emotional outbursts which seem like they're out of nowhere. Now the outbursts may or may not be um, clear to someone else, but I feel very strong floods of emotion inside and I may actually blow on someone else out of nowhere, but I never seem to know when those are coming or happening. And then afterwards, I feel a little overwhelmed or sad about it or a lot overwhelmed and sad. Number six, I can really get super down or super hopeful. I tend to kind of go like this with not a lot of middle emotional ground. I tend to have high highs and low lows about my hopefulness in life or whatever's happening. 
Number seven, I am highly sensitive and annoyed at the sound of others breathing and chewing. That's that classic misophonia, but very, you know, maybe it's babies crying, but you're very triggered and often have a, a very strong, often rage response to other people's uh, just normal, normal sounds. Number eight, I do not like crowds and I am easily startled. I will go into events where there are crowds, but I feel really stressed when I'm there. And even if I get through it, I feel extremely wiped out and exhausted afterwards. Number nine, I always assume the worst is going to happen. If something good happens, I can't get too far into celebrating it because in my mind, something bad is gonna happen next. And lastly, I am a chronic worrier. I overthink, overworry, and overanalyze just about everything. So as you can see, those are what I consider to be the more low-key, chronic, hypervigilant ways of being in the world. It's not that our body is so in that crazy fight or flight. We do tend to have more anxiety and live in that more. So we might have more you know, insomnia, be more stressed, more panic attacks, things like that. But we're not necessarily ready to pounce in fight or flight, but we are always, the volume is really turned up, especially on our emotional and interpersonal symptoms. And in the next video, we'll talk more about what those are. So. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Take care guys. Bye.